this. Mm-hmm. When you love someone, Don't treat them bad. You never had. <laughs> good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. Um, welcome to the Mental House with me, your host, Khadija. Every time I get on, I want to say, "Hey, family! Hey, family!" Who that sound like? <laughs> anyway, um, shout out to the family this morning. Um. I want to share something that a lot of us don't like to talk about, but we really need to because it it, it really talks to our style of being, our character, our way of how we see the world and how the world responds to us. A lot of times we blame everybody else for our shortcomings and our positions in life when basically we are the architect of our own misery. And when I say that, I say it strongly. We are the architects of our own misery. Now, whether we want to uh, deal with that or not, it is what it is. So I like to talk about what it's like growing up in a dysfunctional family. Uh, what it is and what it's like to grow up in one. Okay. So now, let's check this out. Um... It is it, it it seems almost everyone claims to be from a dysfunctional family. Okay? Sometimes we blame our current problems or on the family we grow grew up in to the extent that we don't take responsibility for our own actions. Okay? Our own actions because of what has happened in our families. Other times, our past experiences with dysfunctional families can affect our behavior and how we perform today. How do you know whether family dysfunction is a serious problem for you? Well, why don't you start exploring this issue by learning more about dysfunction in families and the effects of growing up in a turmoil of a family that just don't work. So what is it? A good way to begin your self-journey discovery is to learn the definition, first of all. How is a dysfunctional family defined? If you were or part of a dysfunctional family, define it in um, your terms first. Then, look at other definitions. Okay, like the McGraw uh, Concise Dictionary of Modern Medicine, because it defines... Uh, the term dysfunctional family is a family with multiple internal conflicts, sibling rivalries, parent-child conflicts, domestic violence, mental illness, single parenthood, and external conflicts, alcohol or drug abuse, extramarital affairs, gambling, unemployment, influences, and the effect uh, of the basic needs of the family. Now you tell me from that definition... How many of us grew up in a dysfunctional family? And so when you see that, what the hell make you think ain't nothing wrong with you? What in the hell make you think you got all your I's dotted and your T's crossed and you grew up in a family like this? You are a dysfunctional creature just like the rest of us. Okay, and we have to figure this out because if we don't, we can't get to another level of anything. With uh, thinking everything is wrong with us and everybody is picking on us. When we come from families that are so fragmented and disjointed and broken. That we can't even admit that we are broken people. That is messed up. 
The main thing to remember about this definition is that there are multiple negative influences and they affect basic needs. This is what separates families with minor dysfunction from those where the dysfunction is a serious problem. Now, below we'll discuss the most common influence that lead to family dysfunction. Okay? Now, some of us, I used to have somebody used to always tell me some more than others. Some more than most. Now, you you have certain kind of abuses that happen to you where you just really need to stay in law, lifelong therapy. You're not okay. When certain dysfunctions happen to you in within the family structure and you just walk out saying, oh, okay, I'm fine, I dealt with that. No, 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 no. Most of the times you carry all that baggage into your next relationship. People tend to learn their parenting styles from their parents or other caregivers. If their parents abuse them, they may abuse their children, or they may go overboard in the other direction, being unnecessarily lenient. They may manipulate each other and their children as their parents did to them. They may not truly understand how to teach their children in healthy ways. Uh, the word healthy should not um, be a contention for um, uh, uh, you to be angry, the word healthy means uh, it's a plateau that we're all trying to reach. We all should be trying to reach that. And at this moment, I realize I, at this stage in my life, I don't want any unhealthy people around me. People that even, can't even admit that they are unhealthy, what purpose would they serve in your life? If you are trying to um, uh, um, deal with your shortcomings and you got people around you who won't, or refuse to even admit that they have shortcomings you need to move around from that situation because they're showing you just how unhealthy that they are people tend to um, again reproduce what they've been taught I myself grew up in a very very dysfunctional family so I uh, saw so, seen the definition, but there are a lot of people that grew up in a, a more dysfunctional family than mine. But that doesn't mean that my family wasn't dysfunctional. It doesn't mean because you grew up in a church household or a preacher, you're a preacher kid or a minister's daughter or a preacher's son, that don't mean you didn't grow up with a certain amount of dysfunction. Okay? Good news is for people who grew up in a dysfunctional family is that they can learn better ways of parenting. They can deal with the issues that they still carry as adults and learn how to love, appreciate, respect, and deal with each other in a less emotional, erratic way. All they need is the willingness to do the work that it takes to overcome those issues and find someone to teach them better ways to parent or to be a role model so to say some people in their lives don't even have role models and when they do have role models and God present a role model for them they reject it they um, uh, um, you know they they don't learn from a discipleship they stay on the um, on the hamster wheel, like in a, in, uh, like I, like keeping their amygdala in overdrive. A lot of y'all know what I mean when I say amygdala because we've talked about it on this channel a million times. That part of the brain that keeps acting like a hamster wheel, where we wash, rinse, repeat the same behavior. Wash, rinse, repeat the same behavior. So. Physical illness alone does not cause family dysfunction. However, it can make life much harder for everyone concerned. Parents sometimes rely on their children to do things they would ordinarily do for themselves, causing them intense anxiety and sometimes depression. If one child is ill, the other children may feel neglected as you focus all of your energy on helping that one child. You may not have had any control over the illness that puts such a strain on your family, but you can control your actions. 
Learn to use the resources available to you meet to meet your children's needs. Medical problems present a tremendous challenge, but with the right help, you can keep your family functioning very well. And all you got to do is look at the proof in the pudding of how your family responds to stimuli, many meaning life, of how dysfunctional you are. Okay? So that is a clear gauge. Um, everybody in your family is dysfunctional, then you might think, maybe I came from a dysfunctional environment. Instead of thinking that I, oh, you know, everything, everything is wrong with them. I'm fine. You know, I'm fine. Even though dysfunction and, and abuse and all the other things have happened to me, I'm fine. Oh, no. And I don't carry any of those mental illnesses into my adulthood, into my life, into my relationships. See, that's the problem. Biology plays a major role in, men, in mental illnesses. But the behavior problems are usually part of a psychological problem that make family life much more challenging. People with untreated mental illness can cause discord in a family that would otherwise be highly functional. You know, like if you got a person in there that's schizophrenic and they do, you know, the, the family usually is, is pretty much even on the mobile. If we would look at all families like that mobile we talked about, you know, they one moves, the other one kind of moves a little bit. But when they're highly dysfunctional, you already know. With treatment, people with mental illnesses can be great parents. And they can contribute positively to their families and children. Now you got life circumstances. Stress is an unavoidable part of life. I've been very stressed out this year. I've lost my brother. I've lost my father. I've lost friends. I've lost... Um, just, I've experienced a lot of loss in 2021. So stress is an unavoidable part of life where low levels of stress can have a positive impact on people and push them to achieve their goals. Excessive stress can jeopardize a family's security and well-being. And I'll never let that, uh, allow that to happen. High levels of stress can lead to hostility within the family. Learning to deal with life stressors in a healthy manner is essential to your happiness and well-being. And you have to have these kind of conversations with willing people, willing participants in the family, um, as well as uh, uh, learning. When you model healthy coping strategies to your children, they learn how to function well, even in dire circumstances. You know, uh, you have to be able to model healthy strategies for your children. You cannot expect, um, we cannot expect, um, you know, our children to not take on these same attributes that pretty much paralyze our lives if we don't even try. That means from our grandkids to because it's a cycle. And if it's not broken, it continues on and on and on, just like sexual abuse. It's a cycle. If you don't break it, if you don't be aware of it, if you don't continuously look at what's going on with it within the family, the dynamic, and how it works, and study that, you'll continue to deal with that demonic force through all and watch it run all through your family. Like I said, you got all kinds of people that go to the family picnic and find out that the molester the molested everybody and he's sitting up in there eating barbecue. Okay? Ain't nobody said a damn thing. You're sitting up in there with a damn child molester. Okay. Drug, alcohol, gambling, and other addictions can lead to codependency. With caretakers and spending excessive amounts of time, energy, and other resources on the addicted individual. When an addictive is severe, it can drain a family's financial and emotional resources. Individuals with the slightest mental health issues tend to become sicker when there is an addiction present in the family. But even when mentally healthy people have difficulty dealing with family, uh, 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 excuse me, even mentally healthy people are going to have difficulty dealing with family addictions. 
While addiction can cause problems within a family, addictive behaviors are also in an attempt to cope with the dysfunction of the family dynamics. So this is a double sword. <laughs> you got people running to the drugs to get away from their crazy ass family. People in the family that doesn't need, that don't need their needs, um, that don't get their needs met, may turn to alcohol and drugs or food or gambling, some some kind of, uh, uh, um, you know, temporary relief from the madness. Now, this is what my family suffered from a lot in the dysfunction: perfectionism. Perfectionism is a parent. A parents often put incredible pressure on their partners and their children, not just to do their best, but to accomplish the impossible. Perfectionism in unrealistic can be toxic to the family life. Perfectionist loved ones often feel like they're walking on eggshells. Children with perfectionist parents may lose their innate light-hearted spirit and find it difficult to learn. You know. Uh, I, I used to have a parent that would ask you, what's five times five? I said, what's five times five? What's five times five? <laughs> and you're like, oh my God, why are they teaching me? You, my dear, may not be the tutor. Because when you're beating up your kids and you're getting frustrated because they can't answer questions, you know you definitely don't have the skill. <laughs> and I'm laughing, but that has grown uh, has been a part of my upbringing. It's not funny. So let me stop laughing about it because it's not funny. And that right there is just pretty much a nervous laugh. Just thinking about how crazy that is. To think that you're going to be perfect, it doesn't work like that. And the remnants that I have to deal with growing up in a family like that is very challenging. Sometimes I put a lot of pressure on myself. Way too much pressure on myself that I should be putting on. Because I'm only human. But my learned behavior is to keep on pushing. Is to be perfect in all that I do. And it is okay to strive for perfection. But it is an unattainable goal. It is just enjoy the journey. I mean, I try to do the right thing. So then you got parents with and family members with ineffective communication. I think this is one of the worst ones where you can't say anything to them without them hanging up the phone on you or, uh, you know, not wanting to express themselves or you can't talk to the family member without them going off and snapping up the tree and all this happens. So this is the way our communication style is. When you got families that have that type of communication style, it's very difficult to have a intelligent, cohesive conversation because who want to talk to you? They already know what the outcome is going to be. It's going to be you snapping and going off the deep end. I'd rather not say anything. And then that's no way of living because you can't be authentic. So poor communication may be the single uh, most telling characteristic of a uh, dysfunctional family. When you can't communicate and you can't even talk to the person, you can't even uh, uh, respond and do that, man. You you so you kind of low on the totem pole. You need to open that part of your heart up. It's not your fault. It's the abuse. Virtually any problem can be managed with open, honest, and healthy communication. One common theme in a dysfunctional family is the inability or the unwillingness to listen. They don't even want to listen. So that's very dysfunctional. In many cases, an individual will avoid direct communication with the person who has caused the problem in their mind. Instead of confiding in other family members in an effort to evade uh, a, a confrontation uh, or to ease the situation, they do nothing. Uh, uh, indirect communication can cause bitterness and passive-aggressive behavior. It can also result in a lack of trust within the family unit. <clears throat> wow, 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 wow. Lack of empathy. When a parent lacks empathy, his or her children may find that um, the parent's love is conditional. When a parent shows empathy, however, 
he or she models this trait to the child, which can help children become compassionate, empathetic adults. The unconditional love, empathy, and the open communication present in healthy families presents parents uh, work with their children in a constructive manner, even when the child makes a mistake or a poor decision. In healthy families, parents are intent on helping their children make good decisions and learn from their mistakes rather than belittling them uh, or instilling shame in them. All those are totally lack uh, of empathy. Then you got excessive attempts to control. And I'm going to leave it with this one for today. Dysfunctional families are often characterized by a parent's excessive need to control, okay, their children or the other parent, the environment, whatever. Taking a more relaxed, accepting approach, encouraging kids, it encourages kids to do their best in every situation. And that's more healthier rather than living to appease a controlling parent. Okay? Um, again, these are the pillars of a dysfunctional family. And as black folk, we got a whole lot of dysfunction because you already know if the dominant society has a cold then we got the thing, right? So most of us are really operating from a disadvantage. And especially when we don't want to even talk about it. Our shortcomings, our dysfunction as a group. Because what they got coming down for us on the pipe, we need all hands on deck. And it's a battle for your mind. And if your mind ain't right, Ain't nothing else going to be right. With that being said, I'll finish up with the part of this and you guys can check it out. This article was done, let me make sure I give her credit, by Kelly Spears. Uh, and it was medically reviewed by um, uh, 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 Patricia Corlew. That was the doctor that was uh, overseeing the article. And okay, you guys, I'll see you in the next video.